I'm going to begin with a review of the Chinese remainder theorem when the mods are not co-prime. To skip this review and go straight to the problem solution, look for the link in the video description. Chinese remainder theorem is only supposed to work if your system of equivalences consists of mods that are co-prime with each other. So what do we do if we have a system like this where some of the mods are not co-prime? We can take a look at one of our mods that isn't prime and break it up into the product of its primes so that the GCD of these two factors is one. And we consider each of these factors in turn. So if x is four more than a multiple of six, it's gonna be four more than a multiple of two and four more than a multiple of three. This simplifies to zero mod two and one mod three. And we notice that we already have these equivalences in our original problem statement. So x equals four mod six is redundant and we can discard this. Let's take a look at the requirement that x is two in mod four. All of these numbers are even, which we already have in our first equivalence over here, but this is the more restrictive relationship so we're going to keep this and discard the requirement that all numbers be even. Discarding these two, we have these three remaining equivalences and all the mods are co-prime, so we can solve. As a reminder, we can solve this by taking our last equivalence and translating it into an equation where x is three more than a multiple of five. We'll substitute this into our second equivalence and simplify. So a is three more than a multiple of four and we substitute in for x x is 20b plus 18. This is also equivalent to 1 in mod 3, so b is 2 more than a multiple of 3, and we substitute for x, simplify, and x is equivalent to 58 mod 60. Solves this system of five equivalences. Let's return to the problem statement. I'm going to start by completing this table of mod equivalences and see if there are any relationships between numbers in mod two and mod four. We notice that sometimes the mods are the same and other times it looks like the mod four residual is always two more than the mod two residual. To summarize, we can say that if X is equal to P in mod two, X will have the same residual in mod four or the residual will be twice as much as it is in mod two. For the purposes of this problem, because we want the mods to all be distinct, we're gonna choose X as equivalent to P plus two in mod four when we choose a residual for mod two. Let's compare mod three and mod six. Again, we notice that sometimes the mods are the same and sometimes the mod six residual is three more than the mod three residual. Whatever residual we have in mod three, we're either gonna have the same thing in mod six or we're gonna have a residual that's three more. Because we need these remainders to be distinct, we're gonna choose the residual that is three more in mod six than in mod three. Let's make a table of all the possible residuals with these restrictions. We noted that if a number has some residual P in mod two, then it's mod four residual that's distinct is gonna be P plus two. If it's residual in mod three is Q, then the mod six residual is gonna be three more than that. And the mod five residual can be anything. Let's start with the smallest possible values of P, zero here, that means we have two in mod four, the smallest valid integer for q is 1. That makes this 4 in mod 6. We need a number between 0 and 4 that we haven't already used. That leaves 3. And we'll call this case 1. We'll stick with p is equal to 0 and check the next valid value of q, which is 3. That gives us a mod 6 residual of 6, which is not valid because these have to be 0 through 5. No higher values of q are possible. So we'll go on to the next value for p. That gives us one here and three in mod four. The smallest value of q now is zero, which means our mod six has to be three, but it's not distinct from what we have in mod four. So this is also not valid. Let's try the next valid value for q, which is two. That makes this five. And then we fill this out with any remaining number from zero to four. Looks like that's either zero or four, that'll be cases two and three. Continuing on with p equals one, the next valid q is four. This becomes seven, which is not valid. And p can only be a mod two residual, which means it can only be zero and one. So we've exhausted all three cases. Case one is zero mod two, one mod three, two mod four, three mod five, and four mod six. This was actually the system of equivalences that we solved in our example. 
So our answer to case 1 is 58 mod 60. Let's look at case 2. Since not all of our mods are co-prime, we look for any equivalences that are redundant. Let's start with this mod 6. If x is equivalent to 5 in mod 6, it's equivalent to 5 in mod 2 and mod 3. This simplifies to 1 and 2 in mods 2 and 3, which is redundant with our first two equivalences, so we can discard this. Let's take a closer look at x is equivalent to 3 in mod 4. All of these numbers are odd, which is also what we have in our first equivalence. But since this is the tightest restriction, we'll keep this and discard the extra restriction that it be odd. Our remaining equivalences are now co-prime, so we can solve. We'll start with this last one. x is a multiple of 5. Plug it into the previous equivalence. 5a is 3 in mod 4. Simplifying and substituting back in for x. x is 15 more than a multiple of 20. And we'll put this into the first equivalence to mod 3 and simplify. So our next set of solutions are going to be 35 in mod 60. Now let's check case 3 over here. We take a look at 5 mod 6. That means x is 5 mod 2 and 5 mod 3. And when we simplify, we find that these are already covered, so we can discard this additional restriction. We'll take a look at 3 in mod 4. These are all going to be odds, so we can discard the additional restriction that x be a mod number. And we're left with the three remaining remaining co-prime mods. Let's start with the last one. x is 4 more than a multiple of 5. a is 3 more than a multiple of 4. Plugging into x, x is 20b plus 19, which is 2 mod 3. So b is 2 mod 3, and we plug in for x. Our solution for case 3 is 59 mod 60. Collecting our three solutions for our three cases, we get numbers that are 35, 58, and 59 in mod 6. We're asked to count the number of solutions for all x between 1 and 1,000. We'll divide 1,000 by 60, and we get 16 with a remainder of 40. We're going to get three solutions for each of these 60 multiples of 16, and we'll get one more solution in this remainder, the one that's mod 35. If you'd like me to solve any other contest problems, please leave them in the comments.